What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we begin season 3 of our save with Alfa Romeo in F1 Manager and as you may well know from the last episode we finished our fight with Williams and finished in 7th position in the championship. In terms of where that leaves us heading into the new season, well it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, the bad news is, is that our performance still leaves us pretty low down all things considered but what i will say is that the gap to us being in the middle of the pack is not nearly as far back as it was at the start of season two so in that sense we have made some progress and we have got upgrades on the car already so if we take a look at bartis's car we've got a new chassis we've got a new rear wing um, and it's the same on archon's car as well he's got the chassis a new rear wing as well we've got new parts getting manufactured and yeah, we are in a decent spot in terms of that. So the underfloor and side pods will get us closer to the middle of the pack as well. And then that's really where the fun begins because then we've got to try and build on that and get ourselves as high up that pack as possible. Because I do think because of that gap that we've clo seemed to have closed down, we might be in a more regular fight for points this year. And hopefully that means a better overall result in the championship. Because now, now that we've hit that mark of top seven, I want us to kick up and be 6th and 5th. If we can get that before the end of the season, great. But if we can show some consistency, even better. So, with that being said, one more thing I need to show you. There's been quite a big shift in the driver market. Now, when I mean a big shift, I mean there's been some huge shifts in terms of big names moving to big teams, big names moving to smaller teams, legends being pushed out into the cold. It's all happened, so let's show you who's gone where. So, in terms of who goes where, these are the top 10 drivers currently rated in the game. So you've got Verstappen still at Red Bull, still doing his thing, but his teammate is now Charles Leclerc. Leclerc made the move at the end of 2024 and thought, you know what, I need a better car, I'm going to Red Bull. So the top two drivers are now in the best car, well seemingly the best car in the game so red bull could be run away winners again of that constructors and of a lot of races this year you then got lando who's still a mclaren boy through and through he hasn't moved but one of the bigger shocks lewis hamilton is now a free agent we have you can see we've got scouting in progress to take a quick look at his stats is it someone we might bring in potentially you never know but again, I think he would be a bit too pricey for us. But again, still interested to see where his stats are at, at this point. He's still 91. He's still rated as the fourth best driver, even at 40. So still got a lot to offer the grid, I think. Now, in terms of big moves, we've got George Russell and Sergio Perez at Ferrari. So Ferrari have cleaned house and got a total new team in. And again, they've got an experienced head in Sergio and a pretty experienced head at this point now that he's 27, George Russell, in at Ferrari. Gasly still at Alpine. Carlos Sainz is now the leading driver at Mercedes. So, it's all... <laughs> I told you, it was a big mix-up in this driving order, and I wasn't lying. You've then got Valtteri, obviously, still at us. Lance Stroll still at Aston Martin. Then you've got Ocon. Fernando Alonso, he's, his rating's starting to dip a little bit now that he's 43. He's now an 86, but he's a free agent. You've got Joe still at Alpine. Sonoda still at Williams. Albon is the backup driver to Sainz at Mercedes now. K-Mag's the backup driver to Lando at McLaren. You then got Piastri jumping over to Aston Martin. Fio's obviously still our backup driver. Giovinazzi is the other driver, so he's finally got himself back in in an F1 drive. Ricardo's still at Alpha Tauri. Drogovic is the reserve driver at Red Bull. De Vries still at Alpha Tauri. And then that's about it until... You get to Haas, where Mick Schumacher and Logan Sargent are now the two drivers. Now, I know you may, may be thinking, where's Hulkenberg? I honestly cannot tell you. From what I can see, Hulkenberg has retired. So, there really is no more Hulkenberg to come, I don't think. Um, I haven't seen him. Uh, I've, I've tried to make a few calls to find out where my old... My old comrade was who used to drive for us in the Haas save, but he's nowhere to be seen. So, yeah, big driver mix-up, which will make this battle in this first race even more interesting to see 
if the drivers going into the new cars can push the limits on these cars and whether they're going to need a bit of time speeding up. I think still that overall we have one of the better squads or better driving lineups in on the grid. Can it be improved? Not without a hefty expense, I don't think. So we'll have to wait and see. But with that being said, I'm going to get us into Bahrain, get us ready through practice and qualifying. And yeah, let's see where we start the race. So as you can see, we've had qualifying free. And Esteban has got himself in the top 10. So a fantastic result to start off our season with. And Valtteri is not far behind him at all. He finishes in 11th in qualifying. So again, despite the car being in 17th, 15th and, and all sorts of positions in terms of the performance, whether it comes to the top speed or the cornering, we are still finding good positions. And we've got fresh components, obviously, because we're starting the season anew. So hopefully it's a case of we can mix it up. Maybe the mix-up of team as well is helping us at the moment. But as you can see, Max is like four tens ahead of George and Leclerc. So this could be a dominant season for Max going forward. But yeah, fantastic result for us in terms of qualifying. Let's see if we can convert it into a points with the first race of the season. This is it. So here we go then. Season three with Alfa Romeo. It starts now. What can Valtteri and Esteban do in this season, I wonder? I do think we're going to have an exciting season. We're up to fifth. We're side by side with Sainz. And we've managed to pull ahead. So get in front of that Mercedes pretty early. And of course, it's going to be very interesting to see how all these driver changes affect the teams. If it's going to mix up the order. Doesn't seem to be too much of a mix up at the moment. Um, because you've still got Ferrari and Red Bull leading the way. Um, and again two formidable teams to have to take on when you've got two 90 rated drivers in Russell and Perez and then you've got 93, 92 rated drivers in Verstappen and Leclerc at Red Bull. So yeah, it's going to be a hell of a season I think to tune into and I hope you guys enjoy it as we get to the end of this first lap with Ocon in 5th and Valtteri in 12th. So we've got signs gaining us now heading into lap 3. DRS has been opened up and yeah, it looks like it's going to be the top four are comfortably we're going to be the top four, I think. But the battle for top five, six, seven, eight, I think that's the spot we're in currently with Esteban. Unless, obviously, any mistakes happen. But, yeah, we're in a really good spot. And it's interesting to see that Esteban's had the better start to the season. Maybe he's just operating better on this car for now. But, obviously, too early to tell where Bottas is going to be. But, hopefully, he can start picking off some of these guys that he's got in front of him and move through the pack. So as you can see, we've dropped to about two and a half seconds behind the Ferraris. Um, we're managing to keep signs behind us, though, despite not really pushing, which is interesting. I think the Mercedes seems to be lacking a bit of straight line speed at the moment. And even with the DRS open, they seem to struggle to really get into the mix of us. But again, it's a good sign if we are managing to keep these teams behind. But the Aston Martin is starting to come through now. And as you can see, Stroll now trying to make an overtake nice and early. And he's done it. He's been a lot more successful at that than Sainz was. So, yeah, very interesting things to note there. Um, when the Merc isn't quite picking up the speed, you think it would. And speaking of picking up speed, we've got the DRS open and we're right behind Stroll. Keeping close to him as Bottas makes an overtake on Magnussen. Let's see how that went. It's going around the outside on that corner. DRS opening up. Got Piastri behind him as well. And he pulls in front, chasing down Gasly as well. And as you can see, we're still behind Stroll with a second or so um, gap now starting to close in on the top four as well. Stroll's helped us pull forward towards the top four. So maybe bigger battle on our hands than we maybe anticipated. But the Aston Martin has kept us in that DRS train and we've sort of managed the tyres pretty well. And hopefully it's a, it's a good sign of things to come really. And as you can see, signs now, sign sorry, stroll now right on the back of Russell within half a second. So again, there must be some pace in that Aston Martin car if he's catching up to Ferraris. And yeah, we're just sort of watching the show from behind, seeing if anything happen, anything happens with these two. Because again, both drivers are known for incidents in the real world, and side by side might not quite be their forte. Nothing happens just yet as Bottas gets in front of Sonoda and moves into the top 10. Along the here. 
And again, the soft tyres are really holding up well. Nine laps in, and we're still into like the mid 70s. So tyre wear is not really a problem for us at the minute. So we're able to use that to our advantage, I think. We've still got about what nine laps to go, so we're not going to be close to having to having to pit. We can if we want to, um, but yeah, we should be in a good spot. And again, the battle for fourth continues. Bottas gets in front of Gasly. And he goes down the side, heading into turn one. DRS opened. Nicely done. And now we go on to Sainz, who has chewed up his tyres quite a bit, actually, on the softs. And the Mercedes, he seems to have pushed quite a lot harder than I would have imagined. Um, and yeah, it's uh, very interesting to see that the Merc isn't quite there yet. As we're going side by side, free wide into that corner is never a good idea, but thankfully Ocon pulls out of it. And we fight another day. So is this the moment where an overtake happens between signs? I keep saying signs. Russell and Stroll. As we go into the outside and then back into the inside, DRS is going to be open again, though. No overtakes. Again, a real bunch up of, uh, of people starting the form. There's... Stroll, Russell, Ocon and Norris all within like a second or so of each other. And Bottas now is making his way towards signs. So let's see what he can do on this DRS straight. As he goes side by side, opens up the ERS and DRS and boom. He's away. Valerie gets up to eighth. What a fantastic result this would be <laughs> if we got this in the first race. As you can see, there's a few cars starting to slow them together now. Valerie in a battle with signs. Sainz has got back in front of him with the with the DRS. But again, I would take 6th and ninth. I would take a dual points finish to start the season, considering where the performance of the car is supposed to be, based on the stats. But we'll have to see how long we can continue that, as Norris now is starting to gain on us a little bit. So we're up to that 14 now, and we've drifted j just over a second behind these two guys. Who are still squabbling over those positions, but Lando's now really on the back of our tails. We've extended the gap now to over a second between Bottas and Sainz, so it's all sort of playing out really well, really. Um, but again, we're sticking closer to these guys than I thought we would. And I'm really surprised we're a top 10. We're top 10 at the minute with both drivers. It's phenomenal performance that they're putting in so far, so hopefully that continues. Use a bit of ERS now to keep our noses in front of Lando. And maybe, just maybe try and eke that distance down on the guys in front. But of course, Lando running on slightly fresher softs. Russell's on mediums, obviously. Um, so it's surprising that he's not been able to start to see a bit of a gap form between him and Stroll. And they're still battling away with each other. But we're using that ERS quite effectively. And again, Gasly's now in front of Sainz as well. So Mercedes really not having a great start to the season with them in 10th and 14th, respectively. And we're going around the outside of Stroll. It's an interesting position to try and make an overtake stick, but Ocon's in a fight here for 5th. But Stroll's just... You can see the Aston Martin's just got the traction there in the straight line to pull away. But we'll have DRS. And again, if something happens just up the road, with Leclerc, Perez and Verstappen all being relatively close together, anything can happen, really, as we get into the pit window now. Let's see if anyone pulls a trigger on an early pit stop. And there's been a crash there. And it's a red flag. Ocon and Norris collided there. Ocon was on the inside line, driving a normal race, and Norris has taken Ocon out. So not a great way. Again, I don't think... That was pretty risky. Where could Ocon go there? Ocon couldn't go anywhere there. So it's going to be a red flag. It's going to be a fresh start. Bottas up to eighth. So we'll be up to six. Fighting Gasly and Sainz. Behind us and hoping for an early overtake. Or two if we can. So red flag to start the season. Ocon's out. Hopefully not too much damage to the car that we have to repair. And his engines are alright as well. Let's go. Let's get pushing. Let's see what we can do. Who's starting on what? Stroll on used softs. But for the most part, yeah, we're in a decent position, I think. And it's a bit of a long game with these medium tyres because we'll end, obviously, on the softs, but I think we'll be able to pull through on that. 
Um, so again, yeah, round lap 40 is where we've got to get these tyres to, and I think we'll be in a pretty good position. As long as we hang out, hang out with these top five guys, I think we'll be okay. So we don't let ourselves slip into the battle with seventh, eighth, and ninth. It should still be. We should. I think we'll. I think we'll be in a comfortable position for points. I don't think we're going to be too far away at all from a decent points hole to start off the season. I don't. I'm not too concerned by that. Obviously, if another crash happens, um, or if you know someone decides to go for an overtake like Norris did on Ocon, we might be in a bit of bother there. But I mean, we've already opened a gap up to Gasly in the Alpine, so positive so far, and we take that. So as you can see, we're just hanging on to the back of Stroll to keep ourselves in DRS territory. We've got a gap open to seven to seven for about two seconds now over Sonoda, who I think is having a really good race um, with the Williams car on the softs in front of his old of his old teammate Gasly. Um, and Jefferson in order to be continuing on that form from last year, I think is a really good sign for him. I'd be interested to see what his rating is now that we're into season three, because I think Sonoda is one of those underrated drivers on the grid. Um, especially in the game because he seems to always continue to climb and it's interesting now that Williams after being into season 3 they were consistently in the top 10 at the back end of last year mainly on Sonoda's side of the garage as well so for me he's one of the underrated drivers in the game and in real life because I think in real life when you look at the Alpha Tauri and what he's had to deal with this year he's had some really good performances so I think for me if he continues on the trajectory that he's on I think he could be a really good driver. I don't know if he'll be necessary in the in the ranks of like a Leclerc or or a Verstappen or you know what people are thinking of Lando or anything like that. But I certainly think top seven, top six drivers is potential. I think. And there's been a yellow flag. I don't know what it was for. I think someone's gone off. De Vries is locked up in 18th. Again, he's again the bottom pack is quite clear to see. It's. The two Hasses and the two Alpha Tauri sort of battling with each other. And then it's really a jumble up in, in the mid-pack, really. And I'm pleased to say, as you can tell so far from the episode, the first 25 laps of the season, that we are firmly in that pack. So, again, sort of in a, a road on our own, really, because we are three seconds adrift now of Stroll. Um, so, yeah, be interested to see how that plays out. Gaz is chipping away at our time at the minute. But again, I think we can, we, as long as we don't make any mistakes, we should be comfortable for the top 10, really. And we're at the halfway point of the race now. And again, doing what we need to do. It's, you know, we're in the, we're in a race with ourselves, really, just to try and put in consistent times and, and sort of just not make any errors and not push the car too far. We're almost five seconds behind Stroll now, which isn't really a surprise. Um, again, would it be interesting to see what Ocon could have done if, he, if he'd... Stayed out of trouble with Lando, but again, Valtteri, we know, is a solid pair of hands. He'll get the car in the position that he can, and he'll hold on to it for as long as possible. Again, 5.3 seconds the gap now to Stroll. 3.6 seconds to Sonoda, who's probably on a bit of a push right now with the last sort of life of his tyres. Um, and yeah, we've just got to see how things shake out, see if any more yellow flags come in. But again, it's going to be an excellent result to start the season, I think. As long as we don't make any silly errors. Oh, and there's been an incident in front. And you can see from the percentage on the tyres, it's the Claire Verstappen. The two teammates at Red Bull colliding. Leclerc looking on the inside. Oh, and that is not going to go down well at the Red Bull garage. That ruins their race, potentially. I mean, they'll be able to get onto a set of mediums and finish it out on them, but does that... Oh, it's going to be a double. It's going to have to be a double pit stop as well. Verstappen getting the blame for it as well with a five-stop penalty. So, early clashes with teammates going on. Season three starting out with a bit of a bang. And Verstappen stayed out on 11% tyres. That's incredible. So Red Bull really not happy with him if they're keeping him out and not doing a double stack. And we go up to fifth, and the clear is down in 16th now. So more points on the board if we can hold on to this position. And this is going to be a hell of a pit stop for Verstappen. Stroll's coming into the pits as well. So very interesting that Stroll's made that decision 
to go early. He's going to have 23 laps. He's going to be on the mediums, I think. And he's going to have to come through a lot of the pack as well. So, again, if we can just see out the next few laps and get onto those soft tyres in a fairly decent position, we should be in a great spot. But, again, running on the podium position. But, again, it's we'll have to see how it shakes out. Strolls down in, what, 14th? We'll probably, when we pit, we'll probably be in a similar position. Because if we pit now, we'd be in 18th and obviously have to come through the pack. But a lot of pit stops are going to happen. So things will change before the end of the race, I'm sure. Signs locked up on turn 13. So, again, the big teams are having a bad weekend. Ferrari sitting there looking pretty right now. So we've got 20 laps to go. We've got about three laps till we come in onto the softs. We're still sitting in third, obviously drifting away further and further from the Ferraris. Um, but that, again, them two are running pretty close, so I wouldn't rule out if them two collide, then it really is been a bad day for the top two teams on the grid. Uh, Piastri is gaining on us. Um, again, he's on slightly fresher medium, so again, don't need to push too hard at this point, and we don't need to panic, also in equal measure. Because um, again, we've got a couple more laps to go, and then the pit stops will happen. But Piastri showing some good pace early on in this Aston Martin. Run side by side with Piastri now, making an overtake. And again, the ga the gap between us and the Ferraris is 13.5 seconds. So, again, they'll be comfortably in the top two, I think, by the time they do their two pit stops. But, again, we're in a good position. So, using this Aston Martin to keep sort of the rest of the pack away from us. Stroll's going to be making his way through the pack in a few moments as well. Um, Sonoda comes in for his pit stop. And, we're, again, we're only a lap or two away from... Our strategy playing out the way we envisioned it from the start of the race. So we're going to push Valtteri now on this lap to come in. Going on the soft tyres. Going side by side with Piastri into the DRS section. And now we want him to try and push on and try and open up a gap as much time as we can to these guys. Because I think when we pit we might come out around 12, 13, 14th maybe depending on how pit stops play out. If we get a decent pit stop as well, that'd be great. Obviously, we haven't had any pit stops yet in this season because Ocon hasn't obviously had to come in and we've had the red flag. So, hard to tell where we're going to be. But we're going to have 17 laps to push on the softs. And let's see where we end up. We're going to come out. I think we'll come out behind Stroll. Yeah, we're definitely coming out behind Stroll. Probably behind Verstappen as well. And then it's maybe De Vries after that. 2.6. We get out in front of Piastri and Magnussen, though, in the pit stop. So that's a good start. So, yeah, top eight. Ricardo making the use of that pit stop as well. I don't know if Ricardo's on 43%. So, yeah. 16 laps to go. Let's see how much time we can make up on these guys in front. Russell and Joe now in the pits. And it's going to be tight. We might get past him. Ricardo is on the back of us with his DRS, but we should stay in front of him, really. I'm going to push now onto this next section. And again, the time's about seven seconds between us and the clear. But again, we've got to stay patient. We can't push the tyres too soon. And yeah, we should be... Yeah, we might catch up. We might get a top five finish here, guys. Honestly. 15 laps to go. Perez comes in for his final pit stop. And he's going to be overtaken by Gasly and Stroll. So Stroll now leading on the 80% tyres. He'll be rubbing his hands together thinking we might have a good position here. Although Russell's behind him. He's on soft tyres. So maybe maybe shouldn't be feeling too comfortable in this position. But again, I think the Ferrari should come out with the top two there. And Stroll should be third. Again, we're about 10 seconds behind him. So I don't think we're going to make up that time before the end of the race. But we might get ourselves in front of the Claire, I think. Again, we've got to try and manage the gap to Magnussen as well at the same time. So still all to play for. Long way to go, though. So as we get into lap, the middle of lap 44, you can see now that K-Mag's got in front. And we're, we're now fighting back and trying to get back in front of K-Mag. So the McLaren is starting to wake up in these late parts of this race. And Piastri's not far behind, then Sonoda's not far behind, and Verstappen's not far behind. So, 
long way to go. Only a couple of seconds off Leclerc now. And we've got to try and keep this going where possible. And unfortunately for Gasly, whilst he was running in the lead and fighting side by side with Stroll before his last pit, he was first and he's locked up and gone off. And that's just caused him to lose out on the podium space. I don't know where his tyres are at. 45% now, so yeah, he's going to be coming in this next pit. He can't leave it too late, otherwise he's going to tumble down the order. And you can see K-Mag making up some real pace on the Claire now. And we've sort of drifted away. So are we going to lose a bit of pace towards the back end of this race here, I wonder? So Leclerc's just been overtaken by K-Mag. We're starting to get towards him now as well. DRS is open. What's percentage tyres he on? 57%. So he's really trying to massage those tyres to the end to get himself at least some points by the end of it. But I don't know if he'll be able to hold on to the tyres for that long. And we're going side by side with him now, heading into DRS. Keep ourselves behind for the DRS detection. And we get that DRS to pull away. And more importantly, pull ourselves towards K-Mag. Who's now only four seconds behind Gasly. Who's going to have to pit sooner rather than later. So as you can see, we've got ten laps to go now. And we're about... Well, we're only a few tens really behind K-Mag. And we're behind Gasly as well. We should make that move on the inside. And we do. And hopefully, we can start to kick on. Let Gasly try and defend Piastri a little bit and open up that time. Because Piastri was starting to get onto the back of us there. And hopefully we can uh, stay in a relatively good spot here. We're sticking with K-Mag though. Who's showing really good pace to be fair in his first race back at McLaren. Um, and yeah, we'll see what he can, we can do with these last 10 laps. So something of, in, of interest to note. The gap has closed down between K-Mag and Stroll by a couple of seconds. Again, don't know if that's a, a big indicator that so there's a major pace to be found here in the back end of this race. But we've just made an overtake there in that DRS section on K-Mag. So we'll have to see how it plays out as K-Mag gets back in front with the DRS. But again, there's a there's a three-way battle here. So we could be in 5th, 6th or 7th by the end of this race. Or 4th, 6th and 7th, I should say. Be interested to see how it plays out, though. I'm sure that Valtteri is going to give it his all and hopefully, I mean the time is starting to come down though, I mean it's maybe a bit too far back to push for the podium but again we're in a really good spot, we just have to try and execute this as best we can and we're letting Bottas push right now on the ERS and he's cutting down the time to stroll to about 6.7 seconds with 5 laps to go K-Mag is on 61% tyres and he's just drifted to over a second behind us Again, not really pushing the tyres, although they're sort of in that medium heat where we don't want to push them a little bit more because if we do, it'll probably cook them and we don't want to go too soon. But there's a six-second gap with a few four laps to go. It's hard to see us cutting that time down, but I've liked what I've seen so far from Bottas in this car and he's been consistent and that's what we need from him. So we've got three laps to go, about a four-second gap to ourselves and Stroll. I think we are just a little bit too far back, though, to make up that pace. Um, on him obviously we'll give it a good go we'll try and push where we can um, and try and open up we've opened the gap up to K-Mag to about 2.5 seconds so yeah uh, good signs of a good season ahead I think and as you can see we're heading into the final lap the two Ferraris battling it out for supremacy in this first race we're a second and a half behind Stroll unfortunately we've gone on full attack for these last couple of laps to try and cut that time down but unfortunately for us, it's just not going to happen. We're going to get a top four finish, though, as long as we finish where we expect to anyway. Um, and again, we'll try and deploy and, and cut that time down. But it's about 1.7 seconds gap now between ourselves and Stroll, uh, which is a might, mightly impressive considering how far back we were to come from about 12 seconds behind to be almost in touch and distance of him. Really happy what Valtteri's been able to do, really. And again, to be within a second of a podium... That's a pretty impressive impressive start to the season. Top four finish. We've equaled our best finish in our career so far, which was the last race in Abu Dhabi. So, yeah, fantastic result for the team. So, there we go then. Result confirmed. Sergio winning it by just two tenths over George. So, a very tight race indeed between the two Ferraris. He got the fastest lap as well, so he'll take that extra point. Lance finishing in third, so another podium for him. He's got a he's racked up quite a few podiums really over the past season, which isn't a surprise considering how strong the Aston Martin 
package has been, but we get 12 points in our first race, which is a huge help to start our season. And again, finishing five seconds ahead of the Aston Martin and the McLaren from Piastri and K-Mag. And yeah, it was an excellent start to the season for us. Unfortunately, obviously, with what happened with Ocon, um, but again, I don't really count that as his fault. Um, so that leaves us in a pretty good start. And we start in the top three for the constructors. Obviously, don't realistically see us being there for a long time. But again, we'll take it for what it is. And we get a good start in the fight for the fastest pit stops as well, as we will start out in third um, for that one with a 2.6 from Valtteri. So hopefully... A good season all round can be had for all of us, really. And, yeah, fantastic result all round. So, as you can see, in terms of the car, Valtteri... Well, Valtteri came through unscathed and Ocon didn't, unfortunately. He's got to have a new sashi, front wing and suspension put on. And he's going to have to have a new gearbox. ERS has took a bit of damage as well, as has the engine, but not as much, obviously, as the gearbox, which is a bit of a frustrating one. Because obviously we have to try and manage these things as, as best we can. So, yeah, that'll cost us, I'm sure, later on in the season. Um, but again, with the gearbox, obviously you get four. So hopefully we'll be able to manage that effectively. But you can see the car's performance now. Let's have a look at how it compares to everyone else on the grid. Still in that sort of lower position, which is why I'm so surprised we've been able to get into the middle of the pack, really. But hopefully with the new underfloor and side pods getting manufactured in time for Australia, that'll help us push us a little bit further up the grid as well. And we'll be able to start this new ATR period um, and build some new components to help push the car even further up the grid. So that's going to be it for today, folks. That will be it for the first episode of Season 3. A um, couple of things, obviously, to announce for you. We scouted Hamilton and, and had a look at him. We had a look at, to see what his contract would be, but sadly, he is retiring. So it is the end of Lewis Hamilton's fabled career. Unfortunately, couldn't get that eighth title. We'll have to see if Max can obviously catch up to him in terms of the titles because he is on four now, so he's only three away. But he hasn't the had the best of starts to the season, so he does have some catching up to do early on. And a new ATR period has started as well, so developments will be coming Thick and fast for this car, heading into sort of the early parts of the season and the middle parts of the season as well. So let's see what we can do to try and improve the car and kick it up a gear. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Obviously, if you have enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.